Wobblies. Welcome to Wobbly Otter Outdoors. I'm Chris and in this week's video we're taking a break from doing gear reviews and we're headed out back to nature. This episode is made possible in part by generous supporters on Patreon. There's been so much activity with the deer local in our area with fawns and the bucks getting their antlers and velvet that we thought this would be a great opportunity to have a look at white-tailed deer, mule deer, and a subspecies of mule deer called black-tailed deer. Down in the bottom left of the screen, we'll put what kind of deer it is and where it was seen. Here's some general deer facts. Fawns are born between late April and early July. A doe may have one to three fawns, and fawns are born with their eyes open and covered in fur. As summer fades into fall, fawns' spots also fade. Their spots are gone by winter. Male deer, bucks, grow and shed their antlers every year. Antlers start growing in March or April and are fully grown by late summer. While growing, the antlers are covered in velvet. Velvet is living tissue that supplies blood and nutrients to the antlers for them to grow. While in velvet, the antlers are very sensitive to touch and easily broken. Non-typical antlers are those that don't look normal. They are unusual or extreme in appearance. Several things can cause the abnormalities, including damage to the pedicle or the base where the antlers grow from the buck's head. Severe damage to antler velvet can also cause non-typical antler growth, as can genetics, age, or disease. When antlers are fully grown, they harden and the velvet falls off. Bucks also rub their antlers on trees and things to remove the velvet. Antlers are shed anywhere from January to late March, depending on where the deer lives. White-tailed deer is the most common type of deer in the area where we live of North Central Texas. The white-tailed deer is native to North and Central America and portions of South America as far south as Peru and Bolivia. White-tailed deer vary widely in size depending on their location. North American bucks usually weigh between 150 to 300 pounds and doe or females usually weigh 88 to 198 pounds. In summer, white-tailed deer are reddish in color. In winter, their fur is gray.
The mule deer is indigenous to Western North America and is named for its large ears that are generally three quarters the length of the head. The mule deer appearance is different from the whitetail in several ways. The ears of the mule deer are larger. The mule deer tail is black tipped. Mule deer antlers are bifurcated. They fork as they grow, rather than branching from a single beam as they do in whitetail deer. And mule deer are generally larger and heavier than whitetail deer. There are two forms of black-tailed deer and they are subspecies of mule deer. Both have the characteristic black tail. One is the Colombian black-tailed deer and it's found in western North America from northern California into the Pacific Northwest and coastal British Columbia. The second form of the black-tailed deer is the Sitka deer and it's found coastally in British Columbia, southeast Alaska and south central Alaska. As always, let us know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching Wobbly Otter. We love you and hope all your tomorrows are bright. Until next time.